Hello folks and welcome back to the workshop for a bit of 3D printing goodness. So it's been almost a year since I got my first 3D printer, in this case the Prusa MK3S, and I have used it an awful lot in that time. In fact, I've used it so much that I thought it made sense to get a second one because that meant that I could do simultaneous prints, I could have very large print volumes done in half the time, or I could use one setting on one type, different filaments, that sort of thing. And it just made a lot of sense and it's been a really good decision. I've been using them in all of my projects as well as of course for quality of life improvements here in the workshop and in the home. But the thing is, Obviously, the last main video was done shortly after getting these printers, and I've obviously done little things in between, but a lot of the time people don't seem to revisit them a year later to see what it's been like to own and whether or not there have been any improvements and things that I would have wanted to have when I got the printers to begin with. So I thought with this video it would make sense to not only show some of the things that I think are good ideas to get right at the beginning that maybe aren't listed everywhere, uh, and also some of the things that I have printed to give you inspiration. And of course, if you'd like any of the files, a lot of these ones I'll be able to provide. So just tell me in the comments which ones you think are good, because not all of them I've uploaded to GrabCAD yet, um, because some of them need tweaking and things. But if I'm able to do that, then I think it'd be great fun to put some of them up on GrabCAD, and you can download, print them yourself, and see if they'll be useful for your own kind of spaces, whether it not be the home or your own workshop setups, what have you. So let's dive into starting off with some of the things that I think would be really helpful to know when you're getting started. And of course, we're gonna have chapters here in the bottom of the video, so if you don't need to know all this bit, you can just skip to making stuff and we'll have bits over there. So let's get stuck in. Now, there is one thing that might annoy a few of you out there, and that's that I've largely kept my printers stock since purchasing them. Uh, there is a reason for that though. I haven't really thought about making one into a project printer until quite recently, mostly because this one actually was out of action for quite a long time, which meant that I only had one printer that I could reliably use, and then I just didn't have the time to take this one apart and sort of do it all again properly. Now though, I'm thinking I might try and install something like Octoprint so I can maybe get some build time lapses, or just use this one to play around in general with some other settings that I'll go into a little bit later. But the reason why this one failed is because of the bearings. So one thing I kind of wish I had been alerted to, it's probably written somewhere, but made very clear, would be that these bearings can actually gum up quite easily on the default Prusa. So they're nice and accurate, so you get good um, high quality prints because there's not much play. However, they are also quite dry and you don't come with any kind of lubricated weight or anything, so you need to add some yourself. So to that purpose, I got this super lube here, made by Loctite of all people, and it's really quite good. Uh, so I've used this on the ways for both this printer and my other one, and instantly all the sticking disappeared. Unfortunately, I got this one a little bit late, so I, what I have then did is I bought some new bearings, and these are an upgraded one, so these are Mizumi bearings. Um, I haven't really noticed any differences in the print quality, if I'm honest, but they do have very little play, so some of the other ones maybe are more suitable for quick printing, but these are good for quality, and they're supposed to be more durable than the standard ones. Uh, I guess we'll see it in a few months' time when I've done some more extensive printing with this, but I can imagine that these combined with the Super Lube, yeah, it's probably all going to be fine. One thing I have made a change with this one, though, is I've swapped out the nozzles. So the default that you get with the Prusa is a 0.4mm nozzle, pretty standard across all these i3 style printers. And I swapped this out to a 0.2mm nozzle. Now I haven't really got any good prints to show that off yet, because I actually only did it a couple weeks ago, so I haven't had the chance to print off something specific for it. But uh, I'd like to be able to use that for things like cable combs, because the gap between holes and cable combs is pretty small, and actually a 0.4mm nozzle basically doesn't fit unless you make it really wide, and then the comb looks ugly. So my thought process was go down to a 0.2mm nozzle, and then I can get some more boundaries between all the holes and make things nice and tight again without the risk of everything basically falling apart, which it has done in the past. So that should make things a little bit easier. But the other cool thing is you don't have to go down, you can also go up in size. So one of this, uh, this little kit that I've got here came with a bunch of different nozzles, and these are all the same kind of E3D extruder styles. And uh, this one here is a 0.8mm nozzle, and there's also a 1mm nozzle. So 
that could be quite interesting. I've seen some really cool prints. Um, if you know uh, Maker's Muse, so Angus over there did a great video on using one millimeter nozzles. And some of the prints you can do with those are really cool. They have a really strong sort of layering effect to them, um, which could be really interesting in the right scenario. And they print stupid fast. Like you can print giant ass things really, really quickly because not only can you move faster, um, your layers, you've got fewer of them, and just going up one millimeter at a time is ridiculously fast. So yeah, pretty interesting opportunities. I might try to use that in a future project, maybe doing an entire 3D printed build. That could be quite fun. So we'll have to see how that plays out. But either way, swapping nozzles, great thing. If you're getting a printer, I would definitely suggest picking up a few different nozzles when you get it in one go. You're likely gonna swap them out later on, just may as well give it a go straight near the start. You never know what you might like. And just having the stuff to hand is always a good idea anyway. One thing I was told pretty early on that I will echo is don't bother trying to print an ABS. Sure, the printer can do it, but it's just not ideal because there is no enclosure. So you're gonna to have to either make one or buy one. And quite frankly, for the tiny gains over other materials such as nylon or PETG, it's just not worth the faff and I can't be bothered. Uh, I've had far more prints fail than succeed because without the enclosure, you just don't have the sort of even heat control and distribution across the entire build volume. So things just warp, they delaminate, I just don't bother with it. However, if you do want an enclosure, uh, the Prusa does actually have a really good video on how to make one for this printer uh, out of some IKEA tables. In fact, I might do that myself just because they look a little bit nicer and will help keep things nice and clean and organized inside the home. For the most part though, I just stick to PLA and PTG. PTG works really well for the prints that I need a bit more strength from. Uh, it doesn't print quite as easily as PLA, it's a bit stringier. However, you can get some really good resolution prints and if you get your settings just nailed, actually it prints very, very reliably. So I've got no problems with it. I'll get a slightly better surface finish if I'm using PLA. So if I'm going to be say painting and doing things afterwards, I'll probably stick with that. But if it needs a bit more strength, a bit more rigidity for say like applications where there's a bit of heat, I'll go PTG, although just bear in mind that PTG still has a pretty low melting and warping point. So if you really need some proper strength and you need some things, print in nylon, you can do it on this printer. It's not that easy, it can warp as well, and it's incredibly hydrophilic, so just bear that in mind. You need to be very careful how you store nylon filament. Airtight boxes with some silica gel, definitely. But it can be done, and I've seen quite a few cases where it's been done very well. And actually, again, Angus over at Maker's Muse has some great videos on doing that. Uh, that's why I learned a lot of the stuff that I've been using. I would definitely go check out his channel. He's got some fantastic information over on there. But with that all said and done, let's go take a look at some of the things I've printed over the last year. A slide on under the table headphone stand. One inch sanding belt hook. An EK Quantum D5 reservoir mount. Complete with a rear cable management slot. 3M ear defender wall mount. Wall mount for an ice copper bending jig set. A comfortable handle for a Gunson vibratory polisher. Magnetic newer lighting fixture. A fixture for machining pump tops, which sadly exploded. Okay, so this one I'm particularly proud of because this is my modular drill bit index system. So normally if you buy drill bits in like a set, you get something a bit like that, sort of a drill index. You can also buy standalone ones where you put them all in and it keeps them nice and organized. However, there is a bit of an issue. So of course buying in sets, um, you've only got one spot or however many spots you are basically given in a set. And the thing is, some drill bits wear out faster than others. If you notice here, I'm missing these ones. These ones I use a lot more than these ones over here. So these wear out and snap and all sorts. So I end up having to replace them. Now, previously I was hanging them up on the wall over there on like a hook, which works pretty well. 
but I thought we could do a little bit better because the issue with that one is when you start getting quite a few drill bits in, it's difficult to organize them and try. And it gets a bit fiddly, it's a bit like having loads of keys. So I invented this system and this has been working absolutely fantastically. So basically it's pretty simple at heart. You've got a printed drill index. What makes it a little bit more complicated is that it has a dovetail on the back. Now this allows me to slide it onto a mount on the wall. But what makes it really clever is the fact that this cover here also has a dovetail on it. And why is that special? Well, the thing is, as you use more of these drill bits, you can actually print off more of these and they just slot into each other and they build all the way out to the front. And basically by dividing them up into little sections, you can control however many you need or use based on the kind of thing that you do most often. So if these break and snap all the time, you probably want to have quite a few. Maybe you have three or four. So what you do is you just print off a few more of these and then you snap them together. They have neodymium magnets built into them and that keeps them just nicely aligned and stops them from falling out and sliding everywhere when you take them out. And it keeps it nice and uh, neat. Now, what I was going to do is uh, put some aluminium covers on here, which I'm going to be um, engraving, so I have all the proper sort of denominations written out. But for the time being, it's working fine. And actually, by keeping them like this, it keeps them easy to manage, and I can always spot which ones go where anyway. So surprisingly, that's worked out really well. But I'm very proud of this. Um, and it was a lot more effort than you might think to be able to get all these to line up like that, because actually these are all different lengths. I mean, they're all a bit fun, right? So that's really stubby. Whereas that one's really long, but if you look at the next one or another, it's all nice and organized. And I like that. But either way, this works really well because I can keep them on the wall out of the way. And when I need them, I just take it off, put it near to where I'm working. I do all my stuff and I put the drills back into it and pop it back on the wall. Nice and simple, keeps things out of the way. And of course, you don't have to do it on the wall. You can just have it so it slots into a regular place somewhere else in, uh, in your workshop on the shelf or something. Either way, it's a nice and simple thing to print. Uh, these don't take that long to print, actually, because I use 0.2 millimeter layer height. And it's been really simple. These are just made out of PLA. I'm really proud of these. And uh, I guess I could even make them out of fancy materials on the CNC machine, but 3D printing just seems to be the way to go. Wall mounts for Nipex wire strippers and an MDPC XT3 wire crimper. A modular file rack. A vertical ceiling mount for my camera. Wall clamps for pneumatic hose. A selection of GPU support brackets. Vertical GPU mounts that fit into panels. A Wilson tank from Call of Duty. And of course, all the mounts, jigs, and prototypes used to make Aquacaris so far. Well, folks, I hope that's been handy. Again, if you'd like to see any of the models that I've featured in this video sort of uploaded to GrabCAD, just let me know in the comments and I can work through and see which ones are gonna be more suitable or which ones maybe need edits to make them a little bit more usable for you guys because some of them are very, very application specific. But uh, after that, I can upload them to GrabCAD. I'll update the description and then you can check them out. Now we're gonna have plenty more 3D printing, CNC machining, hardware reviews, tutorials in general, and of course, pretty special project logs coming up soon. So you don't want to miss any of that. And the best way to stay up to date is by subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Of course, you can also find us over on Instagram, Facebook, builds.dg, and Twitter. And of course, don't forget to pop by our Discord server and say hi. We've always got plenty of stuff going on in there and it's a great place to find little updates and tidbits from us and just have a good all round fun chat. And also, if you'd like to support the channel, don't forget to pop by our merchandise store linked below and see if anything strikes your fancy. Take care, folks, and I'll catch you next time.